I'm gonna walk you through step by step how to make some really cool bar stools like this out of some old barrel staves like this. Let's get to work. For this project, we'll need 19 total barrel staves, seven to create this seat, one for each of the four legs, and eight more to create the center support pieces that hold it all together. Whenever I start a new barrel project, the very first thing I like to do is set out all of my pieces. And there's a few very good reasons for doing this. First of all, I wanna make sure that I have enough barrel staves to complete the project that I'm trying to make. Second of all, barrel staves come in a variety of conditions. Some are really nice, like this one here, nice and smooth on the inside. Other times you get barrel staves that are a little bit rougher. Doesn't mean you can't use a rougher barrel stave. You can actually find ways to put them in the project where the roughness isn't as much of an issue. So it doesn't mean you have to throw those out. Another good reason is sometimes I'll mix barrel staves from different barrels. And no matter how many barrels I work with, it seems like no two barrels ever have the same curve. So if I'm working on a project like this bar stool where I need to make sure that the curve of the seat is the same all the way through, I need to make sure that I have a Enough pieces and that they look right before I do that. So for this project, I laid out my four leg pieces, I laid out my eight pieces for my support, and the seven pieces that I'll need for the seat. One other reason I do this is because all barrel staves seem to be a different width. Now the best way to try to get barrel staves that are as close to the same width as possible, for example on these legs, is to try to find the center and put them back to back and see how well they line up here in the middle. This top one is actually about an eighth of an inch wider, which is okay for this project. The next thing I don't like to do is sand, but that's the next part in the process. Barrel staves are really nasty. These are actually from a wine barrel, so they're not as bad as a whiskey barrel. A whiskey barrel stave will typically have a lot more charcoal that'll need to come off, and that stuff gets nasty. When I'm doing my initial sand on these projects, I usually like to use an old sander, because this stuff is a mess, where some sort of mask and usually use a 60 to 80 grit heavy duty sandpaper just to get all this crud off. I'll leave some links down below for this mask and other items that I'm using during this project so that if you want to make one of these for yourself and need some supplies, you can not only get what you need, but you can also help the channel out. The goal of this initial sanding is just to get all the junk and splinters and crud off of these barrel staves. A lot of times they're very messy. What you don't want to do is take it too far and get rid of all of this beautiful patina and character that make these barrel staves so charming. Barrel staves are wonky. They're curved, they have a taper on the edge, and a lot of times they're twisted or warped. Now because of this, we have to start with something that we can try to get as square as possible. And for me on this project, it's the seat top. So the first thing we'll do is cut our two support pieces that hold this seat together to 12 and a half inches in length. But there's a trick to this. To cut this down, I can't simply measure over 12 and a half inches from each side and cut a chunk off. That won't work. You can see that if I did that, I'd have this weird flat spot and then a curve at the end. Barrel staves are always curved more in the middle than they are at each side. So to cut the 12 and a half inches out, I'll first need to find the exact center, measure over, and then that's where I'll make my cut to make sure that I get a chunk right out of the middle of this barrel stave. And that's where this flexible measuring tape really comes in handy. But what this flexible ruler allows me to do is get an accurate measurement across the curve of the barrel stave. I find this harder to do with a traditional measuring tape. A lot of times I'll put my measuring tape on the end and I get this weird bend in the middle and I can never quite get an accurate measurement to find the middle of my barrel staves with a traditional measuring tape like this. The last thing I like to do is double check. You know, the whole measure twice, cut once deal. I'll just measure from each line on my barrel stave and make sure that I have 12 and a half inches all the way across. Next, what I'll need to do is carry that line that I drew on top over to the other side of the barrel stave. If I cut it like this, I'll get a nice flat cut without pinching the blade. So here I just have a scrap piece of wood that I'll use as a shim. I'll put that shim between my fence and my barrel stave to make sure that I don't get a wonky cut. Where I'm gonna cut the barrel stave, I'll make sure that it's nice and flat on my table and I'll make my cut. Now putting the seat together is a little bit tedious, but if you take your time and do it right, it makes the rest of this project so much easier. The first thing I'll do is find the center of the outer two pieces of the top of my seat. I'll measure over 15 inches and I'll line those up on the marks. Next, I'll take some clamps and loosely clamp these in place until I have something like this. And this is where with any barrel project, it's really important that you take your time. I'm gonna take some cross diagonal measurements from the outside corners of my 
piece and I'll make sure that those measurements are exactly the same before moving on. So the outside of these is 15 inches away and the measurement for my diagonals, 19 and 15 sixteenths in each direction. So I've got this as square as I possibly can. And honestly, it probably took me five or six minutes to get everything lined up. Now I'll just make sure my clamps are tightened down super tight so that this can't move. Next, I'll take my drill with the countersink bit and put one screw in each of these. For barrel projects, I usually use one and a half inch screws. Any longer than this and you have the opportunity to poke one through your board. Nobody wants that. Now that I've got one screw in each board, I can take the clamps off. The reason I start with one screw is because when you screw this down, it's really going to clamp everything together. And with these boards all tweaked and warped and curved, you can get some movement in there. What this allows me to do is take my clamps off and double check my diagonals. If my diagonals are off by just a little bit, I can still move and tweak this to get it perfect before I put a second screw in each one of these slats. And once I've double checked that my diagonals are exactly the same, I'll go ahead and put two screws in each one of these top pieces. The next thing I need to do is figure out where this middle piece of the seat is going to go. I loosely clamped it in place, and then I measured the distance between here and here and here and here to make sure they're equal. Then I flipped it over, and I made sure that the measurement here and here are equal, and that's going to get it about as centered as I possibly can. Now I can pre-drill some holes and put two screws on each side to hold that center piece in place. And I don't know if it adds any strength or not, but for these middle slats, I like to just put my screws a little bit offset. And using that exact same process, I was able to get these last two seat slats in place. The legs for these bar stools is 24 inches long. I'll simply pick out which end of the stave is nicest. Take my bendy ruler, measure down 24 inches, then I'll cut these down to length on my miter saw. Now with my seat turned upside down, I'll plant my legs to the outside of my seat support brace. I'll pre-drill one hole and put one screw in each of these legs. I won't do any more screws yet. This will allow me to tweak and move these legs around as I need before I lock everything in place with a few more screws. One other note, I'm using two and a half inch screws for this just to give me a little bit more grip and sturdiness when I attach these legs. Now I suppose if you just wanted a big, unsturdy seat, you could just leave this the way it is. But I like to sit on things that are sturdy. So next we need to add some support in here to make this a little bit sturdier. Then we'll add another layer of support down here that you can also put your feet on to make this bar stool a little bit more comfortable. I'll make this first level of support about seven and a half inches from our support piece on our seat. So I'll simply go around to each leg, measure down seven and a half inches and put a little tick mark. And for this measurement, it's okay to use a normal tape measure. Now the first thing you'll notice is these legs are all wonky. If I measure at the top, I'm at 19 inches across. If I measure in the back, I'm at 18 inches across. So the first thing I want to do is take a measurement between my front pieces at that seven and a half inch mark, which is 17 and three quarters. And on the back, it's at 17 and a half. So what I'll do is split the difference and make each one of these first cross pieces 17 and 5 eighths inch in length. And to make sure that I get that 17 and 5 eighths inch slice out of the middle of this barrel stave, put a mark in the middle, measure equidistance on each side, then I'll cut a slice right out of the middle of this and I'll do that for two of these pieces. You can also see how wonky these legs are this way too. And that's all right. What I'll do is I'll take a measurement from outside to outside at that seven and a half inch mark. And we're about 13 and a half. And here we're about 13. So I'll cut two pieces at 13 and a quarter inch length out of the center of another barrel stave. Next, you wanna clamp all of your pieces in place. Now I like to put my long pieces on top of my short pieces. Then like everything else with any barrel project, you wanna check for square. And the only way to do that, since all of these pieces are so different is to measure your diagonal. Now that mine's perfectly square, I can turn it upside down and I'll put one, one and a half inch screw in each corner to hold it in place. Now we can get this clamped in place to the rest of our chair. What I like to do is line everything up with the front edge, align it to that seven and a half inch mark, then slowly start tightening the clamps around each corner and that should help pull everything into square. If I have a leg or a piece that's not quite cooperating, I'll just use a couple of light taps with a rubber mallet to get it exactly where I want it. Next, I can start putting in a couple of screws. I'll put one two and a half inch screw from the outside into our side piece for each corner. And now that the clamps are removed, I can add two more screws to each one of these pieces. I'll add one more screw to this cross piece, and then I'll put one more screw 
straight through the end grain of this piece here. Now these will just be one and a half inch screws so that I don't split the end grain. And just to show you that not everything goes as planned and these barrel staves are a little finicky sometimes. This one right here just exploded on me. You can see it just cracked apart here and it cracked apart right here. I'll simply just take that piece out, cut a new one, and put one in its place. Now I can rinse and repeat that process. I'll create another frame with whatever measurements I need for my chair. Then I'll measure five inches down from the bottom of my stay to the top of where I want my next row to go. By measuring from the top down, it makes sure everything stays parallel. Then I'll clamp and screw this one in place just like I did the other one. Now that I have the second rail in place, I need to go back and put my second screw in each one of these legs so there'll be two screws attaching it to the top. Now we'll need to trim the top. To trim the top, I'll just measure about one inch over from the edge. Then I can draw a straight line between those two and I'll actually freehand cut this with my circular saw. This next part is optional, but I usually like to put one more screw from the top of the seat into the leg. The next thing we're going to do is plug all the holes that you can see with a white O plug. Put a little glue in each hole, put a plug in each hole, and then sand them flat. And what that does is it just gives you a couple of little plugs in the top that you can see, and it just kind of gives it a neat look. Again, this isn't structural, it isn't needed. I just like the way the plugs look more than anything. Now, after all the plugs are in place, you just cut them with a flush cut saw or sand them down, and then it's time for sanding. These are typically a little bit more rustic. I sometimes only sand these to 120 or 150 max. Then you can decide how you wanna finish them. I finish these in multiple ways before. Sometimes it's with a wiped down poly, a Murphy's oil. A lot of times I just leave them natural the way they are and just let them continue to patina and age over time. If you got a lot of value out of this video, please subscribe down below. And if you want to see more barrel projects, watch this next one on the screen. I think you'll like it too. Thanks for watching.